Welcome back to another episode with Studying with Miss Strat. I'm here to help you understand how to write a literary analysis introduction. Let's get started and just go through it as quick as we can, hey? All right, the key elements of any introduction is going to be this, a global statement. So a global statement is a sentence that acts as an attention grabber and a statement of purpose for your writing. Trying to basically just bring the audience into what you're saying with something that's a little bit interesting, a little bit contextual of what are you, is the topic. Obviously, if you're doing an essay about the text, the very first thing you're going to talk about is the text. And then you're going to kind of go into a little bit more detail of what aspect of the text you're going to look at. Then you have your thesis. And if you haven't already, you can go have a look at my thesis for a literary analysis video that I've already done. But basically, this is your main argument and it is so, so important. You need to have a very good thesis so that you can have a strong argument throughout in each paragraph. Everything in your essay comes back to this part of your um, entire essay, your thesis. It is literally, if I cannot stress it enough, the most important thing that you will write. So do your best to really try and make sure you have a clear topic, emotion or characteristic, the theme or character that you're going to focus on and the result of this so that the reader or the marker is able to say, yes, you've deeply analysed this play rather than, oh, well, couldn't that thesis apply to like, you know, 50,000 books or novels or plays? What makes it specific to this one? And then signposting is two to three sentences that explain the main paragraph ideas you have. So basically, what are the three points that you're going to look at? Because in an essay like this, sometimes you may only look at two points and try to have longer analysis of it. But generally, it's really nice if you can think of the three points so that you've got one paragraph for each and you've got enough analysis to show that you've really um, given deep thought to this, um, this question. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, obviously, I'm teaching Secret River, so I'm using the Secret River as my example. And I've got some global statements that you could look at. If you could look at them and try and reword them into your own words, they might be a great place to start for um, writing your own introduction so that you don't have to get bogged down in global statements. You can go, I'm going to just have a basic idea and I'm going to rework it into this. So some examples that I wrote is um, in the critically acclaimed novel, generally most novels or plays that you're going to write have something that's amazing about it. So please, like, you know, it might be controversial, which is the one I think next I wrote, but, you know, something about it that makes it go, oh, this is why we study this text, not just it is a text that we are forced to study at school, which I know it most probably is even so. <laughs> There's a reason why your teacher has chosen that text. Okay, um, so for example, in the critically acclaimed novel, The Secret River, Kate Granville explores, and then you can put a concept here or a theme, um, obviously not the answer to the theme, but just going where you're going to go into this thing. So if it's going to talk about injustice, you might put injustice, um, or you could have ownership, violence, class, status, belonging, connection. Anyway, so if we said, um, in the critically acclaimed novel, The Secret River, Kate Grenville explores injustice, showing a unique perspective on the value of understanding how the past influences the present. So that just kind of looks at an aspect of injustice, of how past and present. Now, ideally, you'd want it to be something linking in too closely to what your thesis is going to be. But if at the very least you can have something like this, I'm sure your marker will be so pleased to see that you have something that's looking at it in depth of the value of this aspect of the novel. Okay, another example that you could go with is Kate Granville's. Now remember, just one tip, the first time you mention the author, you must put the full name. So Kate Granville. And from then on, you just use the last name. So please don't call her Kate, 
call her Grenville. If you reference her throughout the rest of the essay, that's all you have to use, okay? So in Kate Grenville's highly controversial, so controversial novel this time, The Secret River, she delves into the dark history of Australian colonization, examining very pers varying perspectives of, here we could put a concept in, so if, for example, examining varying perspectives of injustice that caused the eventual decimation and disintegration of Aboriginal cultures. Okay, so that's a nice sort of look at injustice if you were going to go into injustice as a topic. I'm kind of saying that this is what happened and she's giving a little bit of context to that situation from the white settler perspective, okay? Now, once you have a good global statement, please don't spend a lot of time in an essay conditions. You really just need it to be that one sentence. If you're doing a different essay, like um, if you're writing an essay where you have time as an assignment, then you may take two sentences to do this, or depending on your word count, you may expand that. But basically, in exam conditions, don't make it more than one sentence. You want to get straight to the thesis, get your signposting in so that you can move on to the real meat of the essay, the paragraphs, okay? So the thesis itself, I'm just going to do a quick review. I'm not going to go into this a lot of detail because I do have a very long um, one that I've already done that you can look at. So for example, question, the secret river demonstrates that injustice is caused by ignorance. To what extent do you agree with this statement? So to what extent questions are always asking you to look at which factor is more important? So according to this, the factor of ignorance is more important than others. Whereas, um, and so the very first thing that you could do to help you get a better thesis is to write a basic thesis. You do not use this thesis as your thesis because I will show you the very basic thesis. The novel clearly demonstrates that justice is caused by ignorance. Now there is a number of texts in which this could be applied to. We don't even have an idea of what that perspective is that so we don't have a um we're not looking at to what extent because it's kind of just saying this is the only one um there's no other factors and it's very basic and doesn't go into any sort of emotional characteristics and it doesn't elaborate much on the result okay so if we want a good thesis we've got our topic it clearly demonstrates that injustice is caused by ignorance yes we can agree with that statement. However, and there we put in a, an add-in, we're saying, no, it's not the only one. It also shows that it's influenced by arrogance. So here's another emotional characteristic here, and more poignantly, by fear. So we're saying that not only is it injustice caused by ignorance, it's also arrogance and it's also fear. And it is the combination of these qualities within Thornhill, oops, I didn't change that, so within Thornhill that ultimately leads to the massacre of the Darug people. So there we have a clear result. So we've got our, you know, reference to our character, we've got theme here, injustice is our theme. It is the combination of these qualities within Thornhill that causes injustice, okay? Arrogance, fear, and ignorance okay so that is a better thesis that's going to get you a lot better mark but also give you a chance to elaborate on that better and you'll have a stronger knowledge of how to elaborate on that in your paragraphs and so when we get to signposting as we go here you need to look at your thesis because your thesis is going to guide you into how you're going to expand upon those arguments Okay, and the most logical way to go about this is to look at each of these three points individually and elaborate on it. So, um, sorry, I want to go with that spelling today. So, um, here we have ignorance. So, I need to have a sentence that looks at Thornhill and ignorance. So, here's ignorantly, um, the, this is most evident in my signposting. I'm saying this is most evident and how Thornhill endeavours to ignorantly evict the Darug people from, inverted commas, his land, then demonstrates his belief that they are subhuman in his arrogant interactions with them along the Hawkesbury. 
So then I've got two very clearly different paragraphs I'm going to write. One about how he tries to get rid of them from his land. And then the next one about how he's arrogant and how he interacts with them. And I'm going to be able to show some evidence and elaborate on that. And then I go to the, but essentially it is his fear that overrides his ethics, causing the greatest injustice, his compliance in the annihilation of innocence. So there we have a deeper analysis and explanation of what my three arguments are going to be. And that's going to be basically, I can use that in writing my paragraph as my topic sentence. So topic sentence one is going to elaborate on this. Topic sentence two is going to elaborate on this. And topic sentence three is going to elaborate on this. And that's the purpose of signposting. Okay, so then if we go here, one thing that I can encourage you with signposting is that I really recommend using some sentence starters, okay, because you want to use a lot of cohesive devices. I don't know if you noticed, but in this example, I have this is most evident, that's a cohesive device. I'm linking the previous sentence to the next idea and then demonstrates his belief but essentially, and here we have another um, cohesive device joining it together saying, yeah, they're two really important points, but this is the most important point, And this is what it causes, okay? So in terms of that, here's some sentence stats that you could use. He believes, dot, dot, dot. So you could go, he believes this, da, 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 da. da. Underlying X's, or so in this example, we would have underlying Thornhill's perspective appears to be a belief that he is, um, you know, he is better, he is superior to the Aboriginal people. Okay, that would be a nice way. Um, Thornhill seems to attach too much significance to, so he attaches too much significance to his fear, maybe you could look at, ultimately causing Thornhill to annihilate innocent people. Even so, the eventual realization of Thornhill's desires cause him. Now, obviously, in this example, it doesn't fit so well, but in the next um, example paragraph that I have, I'll show you how that could work. X transition from extends the reader's sympathies to um, think this about him, to believe he is a victim of the situation. Additionally, the event calls into question his moral integrity so that's a nice way you can look at it. Illustrates the tragedy of um, obsessing about ownership over relationships, okay? So something like these, these are great sentence starters. If you can just memorize at least a couple of these, it's really good for your signposting to kind of connect ideas together because that's what you're trying to do. Okay, so here's an example of a high level um, an example, I've got a question. So the question is, William Thornhill's obsession with ownership of Thornhill Place is selfish. To what extent do you agree with this interpretation of his character? Justify your position. Okay, so I have my global statement here at the start. Um, we go through it here. Obsession is often entwined with insecurity and immorality. Is it um, uh, obsession, often entwined with insecurity and immorality, is the basis of tension that Granville creates in her critically acclaimed novel, The Secret River. So I am going to be talking about obsession. I'm going to look at insecurity and immorality as well. And that's the basis of her tension. Okay, so this is a nice little segue into my thesis. And my thesis goes to here. So through the protagonist, William Thornhill, the reader sees the devastating results obsession leads to through his amoral actions as he selfishly seizes ownership of Thornhill Place at the expense of his family and self-respect. So we're kind of looking here at how the devastating results of obsession leads to his amoral actions and he seizes ownership of Thornhill Place at the expense of family and self-respect. So he is basically saying, he, he, we agree, we agree completely. He is obsessed with Thornhill's place and it is based on selfishness. And that causes him to lose his self-respect as well as his family. Um, motivated by his traumatic, so here we have our signposting, okay? So motivated by his traumatic past, he seeks 
respect and freedom through the possession of land, and this journey eventually results in his mercenary actions towards the Darug people in order to lay claim to Thornhill Place. Even so, the eventual realization of his desires does not lead to the peace and contentment he envisioned as he loses connection to his family and self. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is his traumatic past. The next thing is his involvement in the massacre. And then finally, I'm gonna say how it doesn't do what he wants. I'm looking at that last chapter sort of thing of how it basically didn't, it's kind of like an epilogue, that end bit, where it didn't actually achieve what he wanted and he's a bit confused about how, why, but we, the reader, can see he's disconnected. He's disconnected to himself and he's disconnected to his family because of his actions. Okay, and so there we have a reasonable, reasonably good introduction that we can expand on and really get and show our analysis. Okay, so I'm trying to get shorter with my videos, so I think I succeeded a little bit with this one, but that's a great way to structure your intro and all the best with your writing.